Hello and welcome to the Intuitive Heart Healing Podcast. My name is Valerie McLaughlin and I am your host for today's podcast. Today's podcast, I want to talk about community and collective awareness. I feel that this is a huge part of our healing and our growth and our continued commitment as one. And I feel that sometimes in the spiritual community, we don't always see this in a full picture. I'm going to start by saying that I believe we all are aware that awareness of self is important. And I have in the past, and I will continue to talk about how important awareness is. Change happens when we become aware of something. So if you are, as an individual, constantly talking, having negative talk, talk, negative self-talk, where you're telling yourself you're not good enough, or you have doubts about yourself. Sometimes we do this and we're not even conscious of it. And we're not, when we're not even conscious of it, we can't make the shift and change. So once you become aware of it, then you can make the shift and change. You can heal. And that even has to do with past traumas, like going back and healing childhood traumas, childhood shadow work, the inner child work, you can only do that when you become aware of it and when you allow yourself to go in there and heal that. And I am a big proponent in the fact that when you heal yourself, you help the collective and you help inspire others to change. And I will always be a believer in that. But I believe that we can step it up a notch and also do more to help the collective and the community on our healing journey. And I feel that sometimes in the spiritual realm of things and and spiritual practice you know we talk about wanting to be in the vibration we want to hold I totally agree with that I totally understand that we talk about you know looking at positive things which is great but there are two aspects of us we are light and we are shadow and if you are constantly just looking at the light and ignoring the shadow within you You're ignoring a part of you that is going to help elevate you and help you change. And you're really not healing that part of you by just being in the light. It's something sometimes people call a spiritual bypass. I'm going to call it using the light to shield the shadow. We want to bring the shadow into the light. We don't want to use the light to shield the shadow. And so we, when you do this as a collective, one of the ways as a collective that we do this is when we are not aware of what is going on in your society, in your community, in your collective, in your family, in your support circle, whatever you want to call it, they're all different aspects of everything. Remember, we are human and we are divine. We are two parts of one. We are many things and we are one. So our divineness wants to be in that light. And we want to elevate ourselves even more. And we want to help elevate the collective as well. And ignoring our shadow doesn't help us do that. And so ignoring our humanness 
doesn't help us in elevating ourselves as a collective. My opinion, like always, listen with an open heart. Take what you feel is true and right for you and whatever isn't, leave it and move on. I want to open your eyes up to another perspective, especially with a lot of things that are going on today. So our humanness, we have to interact as humans. We have to be humans. And it's not just about being the light side of humanness. It's also about seeing the dark side of humanness because we are both light and dark. There's quote unquote good and bad. Um, I don't like to look at it in that aspects, you know, but just for this part, like there are aspects of humans that we don't align vibrationally all the time. And there is absolute, and that's on the higher end and on the lower end of the vibration. Spiritually, it's the same thing. The more that we heal, the more that we can start aligning on a higher end and leaving parts of the lower end. But remember, as you grow, you don't want to fully disconnect from that lower end because part of you growing and evolving is helping to uplift others to grow involved and up as well. And so if you shun yourself away from that, then you don't bring others along with you. You don't fully bring others along with you. And we are all in this together. We are all one collective. And so spiritually, I feel that there is a lot when we start to evolve and grow and we go, oh, I don't watch the news. Oh, I don't, I don't see that. Well, to me, that is not doing enough to be aware of what's going on in your family, in your collective, to help what is going on. And I'm going to use a personal example. My grandmother, you've heard me talk about her a lot. I love her to death. I, I never felt more connected to a soul here on earth as I did to her. But it doesn't mean that I have always agreed with her because there's a lot of things that I didn't agree with, but I accepted them as part of her and part of her journey. But one of the things that she did was if it wasn't talked about, it didn't happen. If she didn't want to see something, she ignored it. But it didn't change the fact that it kept on happening. So my uncles were all had pretty addicting behavior behaviors. Um, and they've all have had, uh, different addictions to different drugs. My one uncle was in the 70s, got really into pot. For some of you, that may or may not be a big thing. And um, we all have different relationships to it. As I grew up, I understood that that smell was pot being smoked because he always lived with my grandma. He built an apartment on the back of her house that she paid for, um, that he lived in his whole entire life. And we would say something and she wouldn't, we'd be like, what's that smell? She goes, I don't smell anything. And clear a day you can smell it. It was if you didn't talk about it, it wasn't happening. And unfortunately, it led to my other uncles kind of going down that path, same path and then getting more involved in there. And eventually, I lost two of my uncles and my aunt to 
drug-related deaths. Two of them were actually overdose. Because there was a ignoring of a part of what was going on because in her mind, and, and part of it is our upbringing and how she's brought up, is if I don't see it, I don't hear it, we don't talk about it, it didn't happen. It's like the ostrich put your head in your sand. And I feel that, it, I feel like a spiritual community, sometimes we do that. We put our heads in the sand because we are connecting so much spiritually that we forget about our humanness and what we can do to help heal the planet, to help heal the people on the planet. And when we're not paying attention to, the, to what's going on, and I'm not saying you have to watch the news, I'm not saying that all, at all. I don't watch the news. I, I know that as somebody who's empathic, watching the news where it's usually talking a lot about this shooting, this car accident, this thing that happened, isn't good for me. But I do read and I do listen to other people. And I listen to what is going on around us. I listen to um, indigenous people. I listen to people of color. I listen to the, the LGBTQIA community and the queer community because I want to know more about other people's experiences. Because I see things through my lens, you see things through your lens, and we see things through what we've been taught. And so in order to make changes on things to broaden our perspective it's good to listen to other people and listen to what is be going on in our political system you know i grew up as a gen i am a gen xer i grew up in the 80s and you know it was one of those things where you know you don't you don't necessarily rock the boat um you know our vote didn't count, that's what we talk about. You don't talk about politics because that's like taboo. You don't do that and you don't wanna start any problems and all this. But when things are repeating themselves in this world and we're not paying attention to it and groups of people are hurting because of this, I believe as a community of healers, that we are doing a disservice to the community by not being aware of what's going on. I recently, on my trip back east, I was talking about things and, and people are like, oh, you know a lot about a lot of things that are going on. Because I realized that I wasn't looking and seeing what was going on. I was one of those people that was not paying attention. And in not paying attention, a lot of stuff happened. And now I, I become more aware because I want to do things to help heal parts of me, which a lot of what's going on has helped me to heal parts of me, but also to help heal others. And to kind of give you an example, I'm a member of the LGBTQIA community. I'm a member of the queer community, and I'm not the only community that is being, um, having the rights taken away. I'm not the only disadvantaged community. In fact, you can say that the indigenous community and the people of color and the black community, they have more, more disadvantage. You may or may not agree with that. That's my, my opinion. That's my perspective from things that I've, I've seen and things that I've heard <clears throat> and bills that I've, I've read and I've become aware of. Um, as a member of the queer community, growing up in the 80s, seeing the AIDS pandemic and seeing how it affected the community, 
and how much the community fought for better rights, fought for equality, fought for uh, gay marriage. And it seemed like it got to a point, and I'm one of those people where I feel like I got to this point was like, okay, it's done, I accept it, and that's it, and kind of ignored it and stopped doing anything for a while. And now a lot of things are happening where rights around in all these different states are being taken taking away from the queer community, especially the trans community. And in the LGBTQIA community, there are people that don't want a trans to be part of the community. And I disagree with that um, wholeheartedly because the community got stronger and was able to fight for things because of the trans activists that have come before us to help fight for our rights and stood up for themselves and the rest of the community. And I believe that we are stronger as a community when we stand together, not just the queer community, but the community and collective as a whole. When we stand and work together, we are stronger. And in order to be stronger, we have to listen to other people's perspectives. We have to listen to other people's viewpoints on both sides. Because if we aren't listening to each other, then we can't help each other grow and change. We can't help each other heal. And I see this a lot in, in, in looking at things that are going across, and I'm just gonna speak with the, with the queer community, is when somebody disagrees with something, like transgender rights, it's automatically like you're transphobic. And yes, you possibly are transphobic, but saying those words aren't necessarily going to help make shifts and change. We have to begin to listen so that we can go and, and help go heal the roots of where all this is coming from. And also, if I'm shutting off and not listening to somebody because they totally dis their total boot points are on the other side of me. And let me tell you, this is something that I constantly work on myself. Constantly work on myself because sometimes it's hard when it's so personal. But when it's so personal and it's hard and it hurts, that's another opportunity for me to go deeper to figure out where it's coming from inside of me that I can begin to heal. And sometimes it's anger and how, how do I transform that anger to help deliver a clear message, to help unite people and bring people together. And communication and listening are a huge part of it. But the first part is you have to become aware. If you are not aware of what is going on in this world, then you cannot help make the shifts and changes. And if your awareness is only reading headlines or listen to 30 minute, 10 minute, no, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 minute, 15 seconds, 15 minute clips um, of, of people stating one opinion you're not opening up to all of what's going on. So in some of these discussions that I had when I was home, I was talking a lot about uh, some of the transgender bills that are being passed. 
And one of those, one of the transgender bills that we're talking about is the bathroom bills. For, for years, transgender men and women have been going into the bathrooms that they, their gender appears and using those, those bathrooms. And you've heard me talk about this in the past, being somebody that is cisgender woman, um, as a kid, I didn't present necessarily as a woman because I am very gender fluid in how I express myself. I don't always conform to the gender norms, whatever they are in our society that we create. So I always had my hair short and I've had experiences going into a bathroom, into a woman's bathroom and being yelled at to get out and I don't belong. Where there are transgender people, transgender women that present as women that have been going into the women's room for years and transgender men who present as men that have been going and you don't know the difference. You have no idea. They go in, they go, they use the bathroom, they do their business and they walk out. I know when I walk in the bathroom, that's all I do. I don't hang out in the bathroom. I was never one of those people that did my hair, check out my makeup. I went in, in and out. I wanted to get in and out. I never wanted to hang out in the bathrooms. And most people, not all, a good portion of people are like that. And with all these bills that have been passing around this country where it says that you have to go into the bathroom that you are assigned your sex at birth is putting our community at risk. It's putting women at risk. It is putting men at risk. It is putting everybody at risk, kids at risk, whether you're transgender or cisgender at risk because if I am a trans man, I present as a man. I have facial hair. They've been going into the men's room. And now these bills say that they have to go to the bathroom that is signed as, as birth. And they go in. They are now supposed to go into the women's room even though they present as a man. And you can't tell. And so if a cisgender man walks into a bathroom, you aren't going to know whether they are cisgender or transgender. And for those that don't know what cisgender is, it is a person whose gender matches the sex that they were born. It's an adjective used so that we can distinguish between trans and cis. It's been around for years and years and years and years. It's not a new term. It's just something that has been talked about a lot more. And why do I say this put at risk? Well, part of the idea that most of these bathroom bills have come about is because they didn't want trans women going into the women's room because then a man could dress up as a woman, a woman and go into the men's room. And then you can have, you know, sexual assaults and, and, kidnappings and sex trafficking. These bills aren't going to stop that. If people are going to do that, they're going to do that anyway. So banning transgender people from using the bathrooms they feel comfortable with, that they've been using for years that you don't even know that they've been using, it's not going to stop that. And in fact, it's very rare that if men want to walk into the women's room to sexually assault somebody or kidnap somebody, they're just going to do it anyway. But now because of these bills, it's going to make it a lot easier because then they can say that they're trans, a trans man. And the only way you can do that is through looking at their genitals, getting their birth certificate, doing DNA, which is where Florida actually is taking that. And since some of these bills have taken place, cisgender people 
have been harassed in the bathroom like I was as a kid. And when we go into like bills that that are affecting whether trans people can play trans women and trans men can play women and men's sports. And yes, we always talk, you hear a lot about trans women and sports, but there are trans men that are actually in male sports that are actually doing very well, which we don't hear because it's always about women. Kids in that are playing sports, teenagers that are playing sports are being harassed by people who think that they may be trans when they are cisgender because they look more masculine or maybe they're more dominant and they're being harassed by people in the stands and harassed by parents wanting to know if they are if there are sex assigns at that and these things are affecting people all over the place and I'm talking to you about this because the awareness part of our growth is key and something that may sound good on the surface may not be good for the collective as a whole and some of these bills that are being passed whether they have to do with race, whether they have to do with women's rights and abortion rights and women's health care or transgender or the queer community affects, affects everybody as a whole. And so just like when you become aware of something within yourself, like self-talk, when you become aware of something like this, and I... I want you to actually go in and look, don't take my word for it, go dive deeper into the this. And that's what it is all about, is when you become aware of something, go deeper in and learn more. Look at all different, all different viewpoints, all different opinions. Read the actual bills in your states, in your cities, in your counties that are coming up and what they are actually saying and doing. I mean, look at the book ban that's been happening across the whole country. It's not the first time we've been through book bans. It's not the first time we've been through book bans like this big. But where are these book bans leading us? What is the history of the book bans? And what happened after the first round of book bans or the second round of book bans? What was the whole purpose behind them? And how are these books even being banned are the people who's putting requests for the bans actually even reading these books are they just saying oh you know what this one is about women's reproductive rights we need to ban this this one is about race and you know what it puts white people in bad light we should take this up we should ban this People may be saying this and they just, oh, let's put this book up. And they're not even reading books. They're not even reading it. And I'm talking across the board. Book bans, reading the book is important to understand where it's coming from. And my perspective in reading a book might not be yours. So I may not even see what you're talking about because my viewpoint, my perspective, how I grew up and all my life experiences might give me a different take on that book. I know that when I watch different TV shows and and even now, like when I go back and watch shows that I watched years ago, when I was watching them from a different perspective, I see things differently. I also see some spiritual hidden meanings in these because now I'm aware of them. So it's very important for you to do your own research and look at your own um all the different viewpoints on things so that you can draw your own conclusion. But when it triggers something within you, when then that's, a, that's an opportunity for you to heal. But when you hear that somebody else is being triggered by something, it's an opportunity for you to go deeper so that you can help heal the collective. You can help heal the community. You can help grow. 
if you stay in one viewpoint, then you are keeping yourself stuck and you are keeping the collective stuck. And we want to keep moving as a collective, keep raising our vibration. And yes, the work starts with you. The work is always about you, but the work has to extend to the community, to the collective, to what is going on in your family, in your town, in your city, in your county, in your state, in United States or Europe, wherever it is. I'm coming from the viewpoint because I'm in the US, but this is happening all over the world. This is not just America that this is happening. Things like this are happening all over the world. So I encourage you when you become aware of something to kind of go, not kind of, to actually go deeper into and learn. Think of it about when you're going to buy something. And maybe I'm one of those rare cases that do this. Or when you're going to go out to a restaurant. When, when I'm looking to like buy something or to go somewhere, especially a restaurant in a new area, I like to read the reviews. I like to read the good reviews and I like to read the bad reviews. I don't usually read the reviews in the middle. Sometimes I do, but I usually go for both extremes because in there I can learn so much and then draw my own conclusion. Because somebody might say a bad review of a restaurant might might be that they didn't have gluten-free pasta or gluten-free items and that person was was gluten-free. So if I'm looking at a restaurant and they have like a 4.2 stars, I'm reading the reviews. I'm looking to see why that is. And so a restaurant not having gluten-free items may not be a negative for me. For me, it would be, but for, for somebody else, it may not be. So just because they didn't have that for somebody else, that may not be a reason why you won't go to that restaurant. But then you also might read that and say, you know what? I don't want to go to that restaurant because they aren't open to having options for some other, for people that have dietary needs. And I'm, that's important to me. So it also has to align with you and your integrity. So if you look at, look at reviews that are good and bad, you can start to actually draw a clearer conclusion of yourself. And so when I look at things, um, as a community collective, I like to hear all the different perspectives because I want to be able to draw my own community, my own conclusion. But we can instill a lot more growth and a lot more um, healing in our community, in our collective, if we stop putting our heads in the sand and we start becoming more aware of what is happening around us. And that is a lot of times by listening to people, listening to people that are going through whatever is going through, whatever is happening. And so become more aware of what is happening around you so that you can begin to help heal the collective even more. And if it's something that's really triggering something within you, then take the time to go deep. If it's something that's triggering your community, then take the time to go deep and find out why. Find out what's going on. Listen to people, read things, do your own research. Draw your own conclusions. Because people are always going to tell you 
a lot of what you want to hear and or what they want you to hear and not necessarily what is truth and that's on that's coming from all different perspectives we in innately do this as humans so to heal the community to heal the collective you have to be an active participant in that and in order to become an active participant you have to become aware of what's happening and what's going on if you have kids in school get involved and know what's going on know what the school board's doing know know what's going on in your soccer with your soccer team know what's going on in your kids life in your spouse's partner's life in your sibling's life it's and i'm not saying you have to get involved in everything but become aware and and, and get a broader perspective of what's going on around you get out of the the tunnel vision get away from being the ostrich and get your head out of the sand and put it on a swivel and if it becomes too much and too overwhelming, then take a step back. Take the time for yourself so that you can continue to do, do more. I hope that you listen with your open heart and that you Go out and you learn more about what is going on around you and however that looks so that you can help heal yourself, your family, your community, this whole collective consciousness. Because we are all in this together. We can do our part by healing ourselves. We can do a greater part by helping to heal others, by helping to understand and be aware of what other people are facing. Your problems are no greater or less than, than somebody else's, but becoming aware of what someone else is coming through, going through, can help you become aware of something also with its that is innately inside of you that may be ready for heal for healing within you. We do this all together. And by doing this, we help spread more love. And love is really what's gonna change this world, which is gonna change this universe, which is gonna change you. And a higher vibrational impact by spreading more love. Go out and spread some love in this world. I am sending all my love to all of you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.